I hope everyone is healthy and doing well. There are many, many different ways to explore Maui. We generally love to take in the sights and spend a good amount of time in the ocean, so we focus our itinerary to cater to those interests. I'll create another video soon on how I go about planning vacations from logistics to planning tips to itineraries, activities, and even maps. Most of our first day was spent almost entirely in transit. Coming from New York, Maui is a long way from home. This was a fairly spontaneous trip planned just short of two weeks before we departed. At the time of our trip in mid-April 2021, we were still in the middle of the COVID pandemic, so there were some pre-travel steps we needed to complete in order to avoid a quarantine. I'll include some information in, in the description for reference. With a little bit of planning, we were able to use points to get lay flat business seats for the transcontinental flight from JFK to LAX and then first class seats from LAX to Maui. What a way to start the trip. Another video on how to maximize travel with points to come soon. Day two, road to Hana. A number of forums and YouTube videos mention how bad the traffic can get. We started our journey bright and early at 6 a.m. and found the road to be pretty clear and allowed us to go at our own pace. There is hardly any reception on road to Hana, so plan in advance. Most of the viewpoints is clearly marked, but it might be helpful to have distances and ETAs for reference just in case. Our first stop was the Kohoiba lookout where you will see calming ocean views. We grabbed takeout from Zippy's. Highly recommend getting the loco moko and chicken katsu by the way. And then we ate breakfast as we watched surfers ride the morning waves. The next stop brought us to one of our first of many waterfalls. The short hike to the Twin Waterfall view takes only about 20 minutes round trip. The Garden of Eden is a lush botanical garden set on 26 acres with trails, picnic spots, waterfalls, and coastal views. Upon entering, we were welcomed by this beautiful peacock. Walking around the arboretum felt healthy for my soul. I was obsessed with this albizia tree shown here, which originates from the Solomon Islands in New Guinea, and it can be found throughout the property. While looking for the Kianai lookout, we stumbled upon this gem. The Kianai Arboretum is home to the rainbow eucalyptus tree. I've never seen anything like it. It almost seems like the colors are painted on. Yes, the Kia 9 lookout is beautiful, but what's more amazing about it is that it's home to Auntie Sandy's, the best banana bread we had on the island, hands down. If you're in the area, make sure to buy two. You won't regret it. The Hana Lava Tube is one of the most unique caves I've ever been to. Besides the usual stalagmites and stalactites, there also appears to be a never-ending ceiling of glitter. The gold glitter is actually a colony of bacteria coating the upper surface of the cave. These microorganisms combined with water create a luminous golden sparkle. Fun fact, microbes are the oldest form of life on earth. Because there were just too many sights to see on this side of the island, we decided to stay one night in Hana at the Hana Maui Resort. The resort overlooks the ocean and we were able to capture this beautiful sunrise. A few miles past Hana is the coastal side of the Haleakala State Park. The drive is rugged, with some turns having very limited sight, but it was such a unique experience. We honked often to let people know that we were making the turn. Some parts even felt like we were driving through a rainforest. We stopped to buy the Walua Falls and passed by the Venus Ponds. Our original plan was to go to the Bamboo Forest, but we were so enamored with the Red Sand Beach we decided we had to spend more time there. If you haven't seen my top must-see Maui video yet, I'll leave an info card here that links to that video. This beach is a stop that is not to be missed. Red Sand Beach is a secluded beach nestled right next to the Hana Maui property. The Palani Trail next to the Black Sand Beach is also definitely worth a visit. Every corner presented new, beautiful, and wondrous views. The rocks are pretty sharp though, so proper footwear is highly recommended. In a previous trip to Bali, we went through an introductory freediving certification course with total apnea. 
So the next logical step is spear fishing, right? <laughs> we really just wanted to understand the mechanics of it all. Luckily for the fish and my unwillingness to shoot, we didn't catch any fish, but we did meet a friendly turtle friend. At the parking lot of the Nakalele blowhole is Mama Lee's banana bread. Being on a never ending hunt for banana bread, we of course bought one. After a short hike, we settled down at a good viewpoint, snacked on the banana bread, and watched the Nakalele blowhole in all of its glory. If you are enjoying this video or find it to be helpful, please consider liking and subscribing and hit that notification bell so you can be first to know when new content has dropped. We ended the day at Io Valley, which is a quick and easy stop. The hike is short, about half a mile, which includes stairs that take you up 200 feet in elevation. There is a stream at the bottom where you can stop to take pictures, play in the water, or just relax. Isle Valley is where the Battle of Kepaniwa was fought. It is known as one of the most bitter battles fought in Hawaiian history. In ancient Hawaii, legends told of a day when a great king would unite all the Hawaiian islands. King Kamehameha won a decisive battle at Isle Valley and would later unite all the Hawaiian islands under one rule. To kick off day five, we went on a whale watching excursion. This was one of my favorite and most rewarding moments on this trip. Luck was on our side. We were able to see a mommy, a playful baby, and an escort whale almost immediately. I'll link a card to my whale watching video, which has a lot more footage. The Waihei Ridge Trail is a five mile hike round trip with a 1,500 feet elevation. This trail is not a loop, so you can go as far as you like and then double back. The hike is a rewarding and fairly easy hike to magnificent Green Valley views. We booked a snorkel tour to Molokini Crater in Turtle Town. This three-tiered catamaran was fully equipped with two slides, one diving board, all the snorkel accessories you can dream of, noodles, floats, boards, breakfast and lunch included. This was such a nice and leisure way to go snorkeling. We saw a lot of fish, octopus, and even eel. The McKenna Cove, sometimes called the Secret Cove, is so beautiful. It's often used for weddings and photo shoots because of its serenity and beauty. The white buildings that you see in the background is the Haleakala Observatory, Hawaii's first astronomical research observatory. The summit at Haleakala is above one third of Earth's troposphere. We reserved the entire last day to thoroughly explore the Haleakala National Park. We decided to opt out of the sunrise since we already caught a beautiful sunrise in Hana. Quick tip, if you're planning on going to the Haleakala National Park, plan ahead the sunrise viewing requires advanced tickets. It can also get really windy and cold up at the summit. I would highly recommend bringing a fleece or jacket. We were only able to get through part of our planned stops since the clouds started coming in and visibility became non-existent. I'll include our full planned itinerary in the description below, including distance and elevation change. Thanks for coming along with us on this journey. If you're planning an upcoming trip, I hope this video was helpful and can provide some inspiration during your planning process. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a food highlights video from our married trip. Stay safe and be kind to yourself.